This is a problem. I didn't know where it was going, but I didn't know it was that much because I'd never really looked at the figure before. This that is the simplest thing about finance, is once you run a budget, you get better with your finances. Once you know where your money's going, you can work out if you can keep some of it. Welcome to The Intentionally Broke Show, the only show on the internet where we say it's okay to have a budget. It's okay to save money. And in most importantly, it's okay not to put it on a credit card. My name's James Hayes. Welcome to the episode. Today, we're going to be watching an episode of the Till Debt to Us Part series. This one is called Couple Approaches Third Bankruptcy. One of the things that we get told a lot is there's people living paycheck to paycheck. People who are struggling to live. People who are dealing with the cost of living. People who are genuinely down on their luck. The best thing about this show is we highlight that there are people in this world who could be doing better financially and decide not to do so. Make sure to smash the like button. 100 likes would be great. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. It won't be long. So if you want to be a part of the ground floor of this channel, feel free to subscribe. My name is Jennifer. I'm a legal worker. Okay, we've got Jennifer. She's a legal worker. Married to Rick for three years. I'm a material handler in a distribution center is a material handler for a distribution center, okay. My wife and I, we have a combined income of $97,000. Okay, so you are earning $97,000 15 years ago in Canada. That's really good income. Where have they gone wrong? Two kids, Jessica, she's 12, and our youngest is Megan, and she's 10 months. When he met me, he had RSPs and you know, he had savings and he had a credit card. And since he's met me, he's lost all those things. Oh no, so it's her fault that he's in a, fina a bad financial position. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Payday loan places, that took a lot of her money. You can end up owing them $1,100 for the $500 that you borrowed in the first place. Well, that's one of the reasons why you avoid that. If you are earning $91,000 a year, you shouldn't be in any reasonable circumstance going to payday loan. Payday loan companies basically exist for the poorest of the poor to be bent over a barrel and absolutely stripped of all their cash. If you're earning almost $100,000, you shouldn't be going there whatsoever. Something went really wrong here. Who wants to file bankruptcy, really? Rick had already declared bankruptcy once. We ended up having to do it again. So Rick declared bankruptcy once. So him going into the relationship, having savings and whatnot, maybe he tried to learn to do better, met her, and it completely fell to crap. We don't know yet. Keep building and building and building, and then all of a sudden it gets to a point where it's like, okay, now what? So this is the part of the show where the finance expert, Gal Van Zuxley, goes into the house, sees what items they're wasting their money on. Later on, we get to my favorite part of the show is where they go down the budget and see where all the money's actually going, seeing where the debt comes from. And then after that, she puts them through their paces, puts them in a couple of scenarios where they have to either learn how to budget and live on cash and hopefully they turn their life around. That's what we want. We want people to do better financially. To most people, bankruptcy is unthinkable. To Jennifer and Rick, it's routine. They've already gone bankrupt twice and I just can't comprehend how you could be bankrupt twice in the same lifetime. Okay, once, maybe because something bad happened, but then it becomes a pattern uh, and a pattern becomes a choice, and then before you know it, you are intentionally broke. Edit there again, and they're dragging their family into their debt, owing them thousands of dollars. Okay, so they owe their family over $8,000 when they're earning almost $100,000 a year. Mmm, cry me a river. I'm here to help them get from red to black. Nice to meet you, I'm Jennifer. I'm Gil Voss Oxley. If you don't mind, I'd just like to drop my bag and have a look around. What a beautiful baby's room. And this must be Jessica's room, because oh. it's got lots of clothes in the closet. That's incredible. Look how many clothes she's got in that closet. And this must be Jessica's room. Just look how decked out this room is. It's got lots of clothes in the closet. Rumor has it your mother has 10,000 pairs of shoes. There's, oh. 
she has shoes of every color and style. It's like a, a op shop in there, a second hand like Salvation Army store. She's got more shoes than, she's got a pair of shoes every day of the year. Rick's got one pair of shoes. Ha, my man, I'm a one uh, pair of shoes kind of guy. You don't need anything more. I've got a pair of joggers. They do me for my walks. They do me for my work. They do me for anything that I need. I don't need, to... oh yeah, I've got a pair of thongs that I've had since 1945. I have looked at your interviews and I have been through six months worth of financial papers. And here's what I see. You're spending gobs of money more than you have. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people are intentionally broke in my mind. And I think there's a lot of truth into it. If you are living above your means, buying shit you don't need, and spending more money than you make, you are almost guaranteed to never get ahead financially. That's what I've found. You went to the bank machine 104 times in six months. 104 times in six months just to get cash out. That can't be good. That can't be good. We all know when you take out cash, it's like that money doesn't exist. It does. It does and it adds up uh, and it minuses your, your account. But once you get $100 in, in your wallet, you spend it, you don't know where it goes. Which resulted in you ratcheting up $72 a month in banking fees. Oh $72 a month in banking fees. That's the average person's um, phone bill and Netflix and whatever charges. And that's just for the bank to get richer. Don't donate your money to the bank. The bank will do just fine without you. They're okay. It, it might look like they've, they're they struggling financially with their big buildings and furniture uh, that's more expensive than yours. But let me tell you a secret. They are doing just fine. They don't need your donations. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it is. Do you get your bank statements? Yes. Do you look at them? No, no. Of course. Why would they? I don't think you've taken the bankruptcy seriously. There are some people for whom bankruptcy is such a stigma that they never do it again. I don't think you're those people. I'm really excited to see the numbers because I can't comprehend. Uh, I know they're wasting money. I just want to see the numbers because I don't know how you can possibly go be going to your third bankruptcy. It, I don't care who you are. That is ridiculous. Doing it this way. You think you're spending about $400 a month on food. This is great. She asks them how much they think they're spending on food or whatever, right? And they actually get to see what they're actually spending their money on. When it comes to money, it's very important to stay on top of what you're spending. Have a budget. Every wealthy person has a budget. A lot of people think that, oh, the rich are getting richer just because they've got money. If the rich spent money like these poor people, they would be bankrupt. And that's why you see statistics like 70 or 80% of lottery winners lose or spend their money in the first five years. That's why athletes are going broke because they spend, 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 spend. The only reason why rich people are getting richer is because they actually invest their money. Having money is not indicative of staying rich or getting richer. You have to invest your money. You have to save your money. You have to spend less than you make. It's all about budgeting. You're actually spending more than double that. There you go, look at that. They are spending $865 on groceries when they think, uh, they think they're spending $400. There's something wrong there. Oh. You also think you're spending about $200 on clothes, but again, we're almost at the double mark. Okay, let's be brutally honest. Brutally, brutally honest. If you're over 30, you don't need more clothes. You don't. You seriously don't. 184. That's not monthly, is it? Yes, it is. Here's the number I really have a problem with. You're spending over $2,000 a month in cash. Yeah, they have no idea what they're doing. Look at their, their shocked faces. I've got no idea what's going on. And that's why you don't take cash out. It's not just me. Oh, it's not just you. In a couple, it's important to fix the problem, not the blame. We're so, uh, we're so quick to blame other people in the relationship. But if you're both together, it's a you problem. And the problem is you're spending too much money. So work out where the problem is. 
What's, what are you wasting your money on? What am I wasting my money on? Let's work together to save money. Look at me. Just it gets worse. When I add up your numbers, what I find is you're spending 150% of your income or $2,000 a month more than you make. How can we do that when we don't have any credit? You're managing by not paying bills. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Keep it up, and in five years, you're going to be $178,000 in debt. I knew that we were spending money and we didn't know where it was going, but I didn't know it was that much because I'd never really looked at the figure before. Listen to what she says. Listen to what she says. This we is a problem. I didn't know where it was going, but I didn't know it was that much because I'd never really looked at the figure before. This that is the simplest thing about finance is once you run a budget, you get better with your finances. Once you know where your money's going, you can work out if you can keep some of it. My thoughts on budgeting is if you're starting a budget, go through your, your bank statement. The last three to six months worth of your bank statements with a fine tooth comb. Spend a night doing it, right? Work out where your money has to go, your bills, your rent, your mortgage, all the things that you have to spend money on, right? That's not your Netflix account. That is things that you have to do or you're going to starve or go homeless. Remember, needs and wants are two different things, and then work out where all your money's going. Is it daily coffees? Is it brunches with your boyfriends or your girlfriends? Is it just wasting money on just stupid shit? Like the impulse things, right? The impulse things. Then you can work out how much you can save. Say you're spending $500 a month on stupid shit you don't know. Then you realize, oh, I've got a potential of saving $500. And then to help yourself work out what your wants and your needs are, if you're struggling with that. I call it the 13-day rule. If you want something, wait 13 days before you buy it. And if you still want it after 13 days, consider buying it with cash. Not credit, with cash. And if it's something you can't afford to cash for, just save up for it. This eliminates you buying things on impulse, and it also encourages you to cash flow things. Come on, bring me your cards. What's the matter, baby? My daughter's getting baptized on Sunday. Mm. I need your debit card. Yeah. How much is the baptism? In total, probably close to 400. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. A baptism costs money? Um, the church I went to never cost a damn thing to baptize anyone. That's disgusting. That's baptism should be free. Not gonna pay this one to have the baptism. Um, the loan that we have, it's, it's gonna be okay. I mean, what? The loan. Or you're not gonna pay this month to have the baptism. Um, the loan that we have, it's, it's This is one of the reasons why you need to stay on top of your finances because religion is something people really care about. I don't care if you believe in God or not. That's your. That's what you decide to believe in. That's good for you, right? Your beliefs are really important to you. And if you're broke, you can't do what you believe in. If the church you go to is charging for a baptism, and that's something you really care about, but you're too broke to do it, that's one of the reasons why you don't go broke. That's why you take... Stay on top of your finances so you can do things. It's why you stay on top of your finances. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take your baby's baptism away from you. I just want you to be aware that you can't just keep spending money you don't have. Go check on the baby and I'm going to put these somewhere where they're not going to do any damage. Now they're gone. At the time it felt like she cut her legs out from under us. Baby Megan's baptism is going to cost $400, so their first month will be even tougher than I planned. They have done a quick adjustment on your budget and identified the variable expenses that if you pool them together, you can use it to pay for the baptism. There are two parts to a budget. There are the fixed expenses like your rent and your transportation, and there are your variable expenses. What's significant here is that I am cutting your variable expenses the amount you spend by 75%. That's incredible. He seems really upset with this, but cutting down your variable expenses is probably the best thing you can do. Before I met Rick and Jennifer, $2,000 in cash was slipping through their hands each month. 
my new budget forces them to tighten their belts. Every time. The thing, you, like it, you look at them here on the verge of their third bankruptcy. Do they look happy? Do they look happy? Do they look like they're happy with the choices they make? No. There, there's nothing good that could come from wasting money. Nothing good comes from it. It just stresses you out. Why would you want to do this? So you will be living on $900 this month. Okay, let's break that down. But you will also down. have saved $100 and put $60 away for an emergency. Oh, he does not look happy whatsoever. But getting on top of your finances, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. My goal isn't just to reduce their debt. I want Jennifer and Rick to deal with the issues that put them in debt. I brought you in here because I want you to have a look around and see all the stuff in Jessica's room. Just so great. The, the, the worst thing about this is they're teaching that they're, they're teaching their children to live a materialistic life. It's okay to have stuff, but you don't want a spoiled brat child who just ends up not learning the value of things. The challenge this week is you're going to track every time Jessica asks for a cent, be it to buy a stick of gum or a new pair of fabulous jeans. There you go. That's 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 it. Um, and they're going to work out what a spoiled brat this child's going to be. Children, they don't know the cost of things. That's not their problem, right? That's okay. That's the innocence of a child. But if you are consistently saying, yes, 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 you're never going to teach those children good morals. My mom had this saying. She said, I once don't get. It frustrated me as a child, but it's something I'm going to use when I'm a father. That is, if you ever say the words to, to, my, to my mom, mom, I want this. She said, I once don't get. So if you use the word I want, you didn't get it. It's mom, may I please have? And she most likely said no. It's okay to say no to your children. Just like we've done a budget for you guys and we have a handle on what you're spending, we need to have a sense of what she's spending. That's exactly right. And on top of that, right, it'd be very interesting to know your thoughts. And I'm asking you, the viewer, thank you very much for watching, by the way. Smash the like button if you're enjoying the video and subscribe if you're new. I want to know if you would give your child pocket money and how that would work in your family. That's something I'm really interested in knowing. I never got pocket money, uh, but every now and then I'd get $20 to go out to the movies with my mate Joel. Back then, 20, and I'm not old, so back off, $20 was able to get me a $9 movie ticket, uh, I think an $8 thing for um, of KFC, box of KFC, like, three piece chicken whatever and enough money for the bus to there to the theater and back good old days right i think a teenage daughter can be pricey great can i have some money for what the dance is six dollars to get in and then i want to buy some candy and stuff how much did you want for lunch five dollars tell me okay so this is the second house call let's see how we went all about the week and about your challenges. The week was hectic. Yes. Lots of spending on the baptism. Did you stay within the $400? Just tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Is the baptism itself what costs $400? Or is it the gown and the whatnot, right? I just, I can't comprehend that. Budget? Um, just a little over, but we stayed pretty much with it. How did you do with your challenges? You stayed pretty much with it. What are you talking about? You either were on budget or you weren't. They may have done well in their first challenges, but the big test for these two will be surviving the rest of the month on a budget that's been cut by 75%. You have $900 in total in the jars. So how much money do you actually have left in the jars? 120. You have $120 left to last you till the end of the month. Correct. They have spent nearly 90% of their budget and it's only week one. Oh, shoot. It's week one. No wonder why he's stressed out. These guys have no idea, no idea how to live on a budget. Where are you going to live on $120 for three weeks? Oh, make him get another job. This is disgusting. You, you did terribly. Terribly, 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 terribly. You spent more than nine, like 90% of your budget in the first week. You've done terribly. You failed. You can't do this. This is wrong. This is no, 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 no. You can't do this. This is... You should be ashamed of yourself. 
and we had such a huge expense in that week. Rick, Jessica is going on an allowance. You're going to give her $30 a month as spending money and $50 a month for buying her own clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. She has to earn this. She has to earn this. If she sees a great pair of jeans she wants and it costs $75, Gotta save. then Gotta it save. means that she may have to wait a month That's right. to do that. That's right. Because this is a life skill. This is something you are going to need the rest of your life. Nice. Why are you Jessica tends to see having money for herself as for herself and thinks that it's us that's got to buy her everything that she needs. And she's going to have to kind of learn to adjust that. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? It's your job to supply the needs of a child. My challenge for this week, ironically, is to give you an allowance. <laughs> She's happy with that. <laughs> Dad's not. Look at Dad. He ain't happy at all. <laughs> You're going to get $80 a month. $50 of it is for clothes or whatever it is that you need. Uh, you don't need clothes. Oh, my gosh. Need or want. And then you get third. Or Listen to what she asks. Listen to what the teenage girl asks. Clothes or whatever it is that you need. Like need or want. And then you get... She knows the difference between needs and wants. But dimwit father doesn't. $30. Mm. Okay, of the 80 for spending. And then spending. But it's not $30 because remember we're taking $6 oh. away for sharing and saving. Okay. 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 That's like just the cash he keeps on you. Right, exactly. Like, that's yeah. what it's for, but yeah. you gotta be wise with it because yeah. once it's gone, it's gone. I know. So. Yeah, but what's she doing to earn this money? Disgusting, disgusting, disgusting parenting. From this point on, you're gonna learn the value of money. Yeah, earning the value of the money, but she's not earning that. She's gotta freaking work for the money. I can't see anything going wrong here. Yeah. Okay, and the importance of it. The golden rule of savings is to put away 10% of everything you make. No, no, gay. Oh, what are you doing? 10% of your income? No, 25% minimum, if not 35%. 10% is for nah, 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 nah. No. Mm. Believe me, by the time you're 18 years old, you know how to save a buck, <laughs> as opposed to some other people. Yeah, but Dimwit's not teaching his daughter how to earn the money. I hope I did a good job. No, you did a freaking terrible job. You've got to teach your children to earn money. Earn money. Earn money. Oh, my gosh. We'll see in the future how it goes. Depending how old this teenager is, she could have got a job, right? You had some interesting challenges. Mm -hmm. How did it go? It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Did you stay out of the malls? Yes. Did you feel pinched? No. Good. So this is working well. Yep. If you are constantly buying things at the shopping mall, you have no concept of the value for what you have. Spend a month, just not spending any money. I call it a no spend month. No money besides the things that you need. You will become the most zen person because you're happy with what you've got. Stop beeping. Stop beeping. Okay? You become the most zen person because you're happy with what you got. You get to focus on what you have and you end up doing things that don't cost money. You go for walks, spend time with your partner, and actually build a bond with the people around you. So far, how did you do, buddy? I mean, all right. It was a little... Just all right? <laughs> how did Jessica respond? She responded well. Does she like the idea of having her own money? What child doesn't like that for own money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you didn't have any money lessons when you were growing up, so this is sort of a generational thing where she breaking the cycle that's great that she's going to break that cycle learn how to save money learn how to budget money that's great this is one of the reasons why you got to teach your children how to budget budgeting isn't really taught in school 
And a lot of parents are like, oh, well, they should be teaching that too much. No, you should be teaching it to your child. The average credit card debt in America right now is almost $6,000. So the chances are, and on top of that, you've got all this student loan debt getting pushed out to all these gullible t teenagers signing away, not knowing how much debt they're getting into. They're going to become the teacher. So your teacher, the, the woman teaching your children is probably in $30,000 worth of student loan debt, $5,000 worth of credit card debt, and maybe a car loan. You think these people are going to teach your children how to budget and save? No, no, you have to take control of that. And say you're over 18, you're living your own life and no one's taught you how to budget. It is simple. Google it. Learn. There's no reason whatsoever these days to be ignorant how to save money or invest money. So the next challenge is for them to pay back the people that they owe. So they're going to talk to their family and pay back their owings or at least start to do so. Let's see where they go. ...situation, and this week our challenge is to pay back uh, debts that we owe to our family members. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> the kids got it. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, you need to learn that at a very young age. So, <laughs> this one is for you. Thank you. And this one is for you. Thank you. This is uh, unexpected and a, a real uh, pleasure. Frankly, I given the money to her, never expecting to get the money returned. That's the golden rule with uh, lending out money, is you only lend out money that you're willing to give away. Because chances are you ain't seeing that money at all, ever again. I have a golden rule not to lend any money out to anyone. No one gets a penny from James. No, no one gets anything from me. For honoring your debt. It takes practice. All the words in the world are not going to prove to them that this will happen until they see that the checks are cashable. That's exactly right. Actions speak louder than words. Let's get to the final verdict and see how they went. Thank you so much for getting to this part of the episode. Smash the like button. If you enjoy this content, subscribe. We're on our way very quickly to 100,000 subscribers. So join in the community of like-minded people. It's great to have you here. When I saw what you had spent in that first week, I sort of went. <gasps> That's right. I freaked out at the start as well. How did they go? How are they going to make it till the end of the month? But you did it. And so I. They actually did it. That's incredible. Let's see how much money they got. I reckon three to four thousand dollars is what I would give them. They did well. You. Five thousand dollars. So they gave them the full five thousand dollar check. That is. Basically what Gail likes to do. She's a big softie, but that's okay. That's all right. Thank you very much for watching. Check out this video on screen now to see something absolutely amazing. Thank you very much for watching. Check this video out right now.